Recently, a viewer shared with me an enhancement in the Printify Design Editor view that kind of flew under the radar and I hadn't noticed. Specifically, it is support for SVG vector graphics. You can now upload SVGs as your design files on Printify and use them to scale to any size that you need without losing quality. So let's take a few minutes and talk about why you may want to use SVG files, where you can get them, or which tools will export your files in the SVG format. All right, so Printify has started allowing us to use SVG vector graphic files in their design, upload, and editing process. In fact, their information about those file types is behind my head. So there you go. Down in the right corner, it indicates the print file requirements. So it's telling us JPG or JPEG, PNG, and SVG file types are supported. The max file size is 50 megabytes for JPEG and PNG, and that has not changed and the maximum file size for SVG is 20 megabytes. So that is a lower capacity. However, SVG files are generally smaller anyway, so that shouldn't be a big deal. The other two bullet points are dynamic, meaning they change depending on what product you're looking at. It tells you the size of the print area as well as the maximum resolution of the file. So why is the ability to use SVGs a big deal? Well, the name of the file type actually kind of gives it away. It's an SVG or scalable vector graphic and scalable is the key word there. So you can scale that file up significantly without losing any quality. It is not a pixel based type of file. So a raster image like a JPEG or a PNG is based in pixels. So each pixel contains a certain amount of information and each file has a certain number of pixels per inch based on how it was set up when it was created and saved. And once you save that file, that is set forever. You cannot change anything about the pixel density of that file once you've saved it. Now you can always save a print file in a larger dimension than what you really need and scale it down. But scaled vector graphics don't rely on a locked in amount of information per pixel. They're not even based in pixels. So you can scale them up and the image quality or the density of the image does not change. And this is good for us as print on demand sellers because we can reuse the same print file for multiple products and scale it up and scale it down and not worry about the quality of the actual final print. So if you have access to a program that exports your files as an SVG or access to download SVG graphics that are ready to use, then this can be pretty handy because it, it should, in theory, reduce the number of different size print files that you need to use. So how do you get vector graphics or how do you export a file as a vector graphic? Well, it depends on what tool you're using or what source of graphics you're using. I'll give you a couple examples of each. Let's start with Canva because Canva has a feature if you have a Canva Pro account to export your files as an SVG. So let's pretend I made this design using Canva's text and Canva's elements, and now I'm ready to export this file. And I've created this file as a 4,500 by 5,400 size because that's just what I'm used to doing when I design for t-shirt sizes. So I go up to share and download, and now in the file type selector, where I normally would leave this as a PNG, I will, can go down here and select SVG instead. So now I go to SVG, I check off transparent background, and I download this as an SVG. Now what this also means is I don't have to worry about sizing this up to compensate for Canva's lower pixel per inch count for exporting PNGs, because typically we like to save our PNG files in 300 pixels per inch to get the best quality possible and Canva exports their PNG files at 93 pixels per inch. Some people think that's not enough. I personally did an entire test video with multiple samples using different ways of exporting files from Canva and didn't see that big of a difference in them. Check out that video if you're interested and I'll put a link in the corner and in the description. But one thing a lot of sellers do is they will scale up the design. They'll make it a lot bigger than what they need by using the multiplier here. So for example, if I was gonna download this as a PNG, I can do transparent background and then I would take this and do the multiplier up to like one and a half or two and that will make it a much larger file than what I need. So even though it's a lower pixel density when I scale it down, that's gonna help out the dots per inch when it comes out in the print. But I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because I've got this one as an SVG instead. And when I upload it, it comes in just like any other file. The only difference you'll notice is over on the right where they usually give the DPI 
estimator to tell you the quality of the image or the quality of the print. It now says high resolution vector instead of estimating the DPI just to let us know that, hey, we're working with a vector file. So as you can see, you can scale it up, you can scale it down doesn't really matter. I'm at almost 200% to the scale of the print area, and it's still going to come out with good print quality. So that is extremely helpful for those scenarios where later on you decide you want to sell this design on a different product that requires a larger print file because no going back and having to make a bigger print file. I can just use the same one. One other helpful thing that Printify implemented in their design editor, by the way, is these design uh, alignment guide assistance. So now you can actually come in here and move your design around and the guidelines will appear when you have centered your design horizontally and vertically. And that's also a new feature, which is pretty helpful. Now, Photopia also allows you to export files as an SVG, for example. Here is one um, that I got and added some text to, and now we will um, get rid of this background layer that I had there just so I could see the text better. And now if you're using Photopia, you can come up to the File option and go Export As, and SVG is one of your choices here, and it's as simple as that. Just give the file a name and hit Save, and you've got your SVG file. Photoshop is the interesting oddball here in this story because for years, Photoshop supported a very similar feature where you could do export as and then select SVG. However, that's been discontinued in some of the more recent updates of the last year, year and a half from Photoshop. It is still something that you can get to, but you have to go into your menu and enable legacy export options under your preferences. There's a lot of different resources online if you search for export as SVG in Photoshop. So personally, I'm a little disappointed in that because it also means if you're a Mac user, which I have both a Mac and a PC, but if you are a Mac Photoshop user, you also have to run Photoshop in Rosetta just to get that legacy option available to select so that you can then export as SVG files. So it actually is turning out like Photoshop may not be the best option for saving your files in the SVG format. But if you know of an easy, fast way to do that, that works uh, simply that I am missing, please let me know in the comments because I would love to know. One of the program that I've mentioned once or twice, but never really got into much on my channel is Affinity. Affinity has a designer and a photo program that basically are similar competing products to Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. So of course, Adobe Illustrator will export files in SVG and EPS vector formats because it is a vector graphic design program. So if you already use Adobe Illustrator, you're good to go. You're used to working with vectors. But if vectors are a new thing to you and you're looking for programs to consider, I would consider including Affinity in your search and in your research. I'm not going to flat out say just go get Affinity because I haven't used it enough. I use Affinity Photo on my iPad because they have a great full featured iPad version of their software. And the one thing that's unique about Affinity compared to the direction that Adobe has gone with their subscriptions is that both Designer and Photo are available as a single download purchase. And updates will be available, but you can get it for $55 on Mac or Windows or $22 on iPad, and then you're done. You're not going to have to pay a monthly fee. You've just got the program. And I have to say, it's a pretty robust program. As I mentioned, I only have the iPad version, and it does more than the iPad version of Photoshop. It's a, it pretty much does everything that you need to do. Uh, if you do your work on an iPad. So I have not used the Mac or the Windows version of it, but it's not a bad deal to only pay $55 one time and then you've just got the program forever. And I'm mentioning it in this video because Affinity Photo also supports exporting files as an SVG. And of course, Affinity Design supports SVGs because that is a vector graphic design program. Now, where can you get vector graphic files if you're looking more for at least partial graphics that you don't have to do a lot of manipulation to to fit them into your designs? A couple that I use are Creative Fabrica and Vexels. I know I've mentioned Vexels a lot on my channel. I haven't mentioned Creative Fabrica a lot because I've not used it for a super long time, um, but they do have a lot of print-on-demand designs available and a ton of fonts. If you ever need fonts, they have a lot. Um, when I signed up, the all access plan to download as much as you want was $19 per month. But 
I think I only paid that for two months. And then one day I logged in and there was a deal to pay $54, I think, to get a whole year's worth of access. So if you time it right, you can probably get a whole annual subscription for this for less than $60. And there are thousands of assets on Creative Fabrica. Like I said, it's fonts, it's all kinds of graphics that have print-on-demand commercial rights. As you can see, this design for this summer, you know, tropical design, it indicates it has full print-on-demand usage allowed, so you don't have to worry about licensing. And this is just an example of a file that when you download it, you get a folder that includes an EPS, an SVG, and a PNG. So you've got all the types of print files that you could possibly need, including SVG. So a lot of the designs that are available on Creative Fabrica um, automatically download with an SVG in there if you want to use them. And the same is true on Vexels. A lot of their files are available in SVG format, especially the individual elements. I think almost all of the individual elements, meaning it's not a final completed design, are available in SVG format. And Vexels is something I've been using for well over a year now. Um, I at one point paid for a single year, which was around 200 bucks, but they run a Black Friday sale, I think every year where you can get a lifetime subscription for a little, I think it was a little over $400, but basically in two years, you've already paid the same amount for the lifetime subscription versus paying for an annual subscription, and you get to keep it forever. You also don't have to worry about uh, licensing because uh, if your subscription expires, your license also expires. So that means you can no longer use the stuff you've downloaded if you stop paying for Vexels. However, if you pay for the lifetime subscription, you're good forever. You never have to worry about the licensing. So for example, if I just wanted a new sunset style graphic to incorporate and build into my designs, I'd click on one that I like here. And when you go to download it, it gives you the option, this little pop out option to select as a Photoshop PSD, an SVG, or a PNG, and it lets you even select the size you want. So you would just download it as an SVG, and now you can scale it to any size you want to edit it in your designs and then export it as an SVG. So you could upload this to Canva or to Photopia or to Affinity or any program that supports exporting files as an SVG, and now you're good to go. All right, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to share the news in case you hadn't noticed that Printify now supports using SVG files to design your products. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you have any tips for designing or using SVG files because I'd be interested to learn more about using them as well. Do me a favor and hit that like button if you found this information helpful so YouTube can show the video to more people. And go ahead and subscribe to POD Insights to see more videos like this. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for for your support. Thanks everybody. See you next time.